Okay, so welcome back. Uh, our next speaker here is Dan Bosanets, and uh, he will he is the early adopter of uh, Heap Space and our cause. He has been presenting on previous conferences on Vox Days uh, for the past three years. Uh, I will leave now the floor to, to Dan and uh, Dan and remind you once again to uh, join him in the Q&A on the Heap Space booth. Thanks. Thanks. Hello. So, has anyone been here last year on a, on, on a talk about scalable messaging in general? Cool, couple. Does anybody remember anything from, from that talk? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think uh, the session today will be a little bit more of an extension of, uh, of that talk last year we did. And, and like, why do we need something that's, that we call like uh, IoT specific messaging and, and you know, what exact problems we are trying to, to, to solve there. So uh, one thing you, you, you can really f uh, quickly realize when you start talking to people and, and see different IoT architectures is that you can identify pretty quickly uh, some of the major communication patterns going on between the things, devices and, 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 the, and the cloud platforms. And uh, of these four, two are, are really predominant. So one is telemetry. So everybody wants to gather some kind of data from the devices. So, so, so devices sending messages to the cloud, sending telemetry uh, messages to the cloud. The like a most common example you can think of is uh, like a temperature sensor that, that will just uh, go ahead and every couple of seconds send uh, a, a current temperature reading, right? And then in order to have a, like a proper IoT platform, you need to be able to, to control these devices. Without that, th there's no much point doing, doing all these all this things. So we want to gather data, we'll do that through the telemetry, and we want to, to send commands back to the data, and, and, and that's, that's the command and control pattern, pattern uh, usually, usually done. So, uh, and these two things, uh, when, when you're thinking only from the messaging point of view, uh, are, are completely different. Different kind of data being sent back and forth. On one side, you have like this wide arrow, which could imply that like this telemetry data comes in big volume from the, from the things layer to the, to the cloud layer. But on, on the other things, you, you can think, think about this data as not being like uh, most important data in the world. So, if something goes wrong, if, if you skip a couple of minutes of, of readings and things like that, it's not usually depending on the applications, but in most cases, it's, it's not end of the world. So we can say that we can use some kind of, we need to design our messaging platform for these cases to be highly scalable in number of, of uh, messages or, or in, in the throughput we, we're going to deliver, but reliability here is, is not the, the main concern. On the other hand, uh, command and control layer is much uh, less scalable in terms of number of, of data, or number of messages that we f flow between the clouds and the things. But in, in this case, we want, we want to provide that reliability in the delivery of those commands to, to the devices because that's, that's crucial. If you want to send a, a command to like, lock some doors, after that command, after you receive a notification that that command is, is actually executed, you want to be sure that that door is, is actually uh, locked. And, and we can only do that if, if there's a fully proper contract between the clouds and, and, and things when, when they communicate uh, over this channel. So, and then we are coming to, to the question like, okay, so we need, we need some kind of messaging for the for the IoT. So we need to, to have telemetry, we need to have command and control. Okay, so most, most of the people thinking about that say, okay, I'll, I'll pick one of the messaging technologies I already use today. Maybe Kafka, maybe ActMQ, RabbitMQ, whatever I'm familiar with, and you know, start, start working on it. I'll, I'll pick for, for communication some IoT friendly messaging protocol like MQTT and I'm done. But the point is that it's a good start, but so sooner than later, you, you will run into a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that you need to solve additionally on, on top of that. So one of the things, uh, the first thing is like, 
how do we solve these communication patterns? You, 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 whatever to technology you, you need to choose, you need, you need to, for example, define uh, address names that you will use to send telemetry data to different devices, or how you're going to send commands back to the devices, how you're going to address those devices. Uh, that's just, a, a, you, you need to create some kind of a namespace on top of the general purpose messaging address space, so to say. And it's not a hard problem to solve, but people are doing that over and over and over again, and every, every, every system is a little bit different in, in how they do that, and then you end up having a, a lot of silo systems that doing the same thing a little bit differently. Uh, another big thing is that the, the messaging infrastructure, as we can see on, on, on this image, is just one component of the, of, the, of the whole system. So, yeah, we need to send some messages between the things and, 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 the, and the cloud, but the thing is, we need a couple more additional services in, in order to make this uh, uh, system fully, fully, uh, fully functional. So one of the big things is device identity. So how do I know what device that is sending the message? How, uh, how do I know it's, it's my device that's sending a message? Uh, and, and how do I know who, who can co consume these messages? How, how do I know who, will, who can control these devices? From, from the security point of view, again, you can solve that kind of the problems on, on the messaging layer by, by you know, providing ACL patterns all over your topics and cues and things like that, but it's not really appropriate thing to do because you, in this case you want to think about security in the device context. So you want to have like your device IDs and, and, and authentication and, and authorization done on the device level. So I, I want to know, is this device mine? it can uh, connect and, and authenticate. Is this application allowed to send commands to this device or this group of devices? So that kind of security sooner or later need, need to be properly done. And we identified a couple of services that, that are basically mandatory to, to have, to, have uh, to, to, pro, to pro provide you with, with, a, with a core set of, of services that, that's necessary to, 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 to build like a connectivity layer of, of the IoT platform. Everything else comes, comes after. So that's the idea of, of the Eclipse Hono project. It's basically, uh, let's start with the general purpose AMQP messaging, and then provide an APIs that will solve these kind of IoT specific problems. Basically meaning that we want to tailor down the, the general purpose messaging to be IoT specific messaging. Uh, Hono itself is uh, Eclipse, uh, Eclipse project. So uh, there's a, a very nice and large IoT community uh, within the Eclipse Software Foundation. It's not just the IDE. There's a lot of more, more stuff going on there. So IoT community is, is one of those communities. And, and uh, Eclipse Hono is, is project there. And it's mainly uh, uh, created as an effort from the developers from the Bosch and Red Hat to, 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 to solve this. Uh, I, as I said, Already, there's a, there's a things that, that, that are with the, with the goals and, and main features that, that we need to, to, to provide uh, for, for such a, such a messaging solution. Some things that, that we haven't yet talk, talk, talked about is the, every project and every platform that, that aspires to be a, a, a cloud platform needs to have a multi-tenancy uh, as a, one of the main features, and, and we'll come that uh, uh, a, a little bit more. And what, what we want to do as well is provide a, a multi-protocol -pro support because everybody who played a little bit with IoT knows that it's a, it's a jungle there when, when you start looking into the devices protocols. And so everybody has its own, uh, its own protocol. So what we want to do is, is to provide, a, additionally provide a framework where people can use off the shelf uh, protocol adapters for, for some of the mainstream protocols like MQTT, like all, all the variants of HTTP that, that we can find in the wild, but also can, can uh, write their own, own protocols for the custom proprietary things that, for the devices that, that they need uh, uh, to connect. As we started this from the scratch a couple of years ago and aspire to be cloud native, so to say, it's all built on, on the proven technologies for, for, for this kind of thing, so everything uh, 
is run as a set of microservices running in, in Docker and that can be orchestrated on the OpenShift or, or Kubernetes. But I know that you know microservices is, is a, a, a new a new hype. I mean, it's not new; it's a couple of years old. But I think for this use case, uh, actually, it makes sense. So here are some of the, the basic blocks. So this is like a 10,000 feet view of, of, of the Hono system. And on the edges of the system, uh, sorry, we have devices and business applications, two things that we want to, to connect to each other. Then we have uh, an MQP 1.0 messaging network. So that's a general purpose messaging. We'll talk a little bit uh, in, in more details about that. And these are the, the services that basically Hono wants to provide on top of that. So protocol adapters, as I said, there to, to, to support any kind of uh, uh, field protocols that, that, that are used in IoT and you know, uh, do a protocol conversion to the MQP 1.0. And all these tenancy, device identity, device security is de defined by the, by the services that can broadly be scoped to the you know, security endpoints and APIs. A little bit more, more uh, detailed picture of, of, the, of the architecture. So here we can see that uh, these are the basic microservices or services provided by the, by the HONO. So we still have devices and business applications. So this only shows this, how the system looks for, a, for a, like a telemetry use case. But through that, we, we can explain most of the components and, and, and try to explain uh, why do we need them. Uh, the general purpose messaging uh, infrastructure, MQP 1.0 infrastructure, usually consists of, of our routers and the brokers. We will, again, talk, talk about that later. And then we have a set of services uh, that, are, that are important for, for IoT. So we have, in this case, MQTT adapter to onboard MQTT devices. Uh, that's, I, I think, pretty self-explanatory. Explanatory, right? And then the, the Hono messaging component uh, basically needs, needs to do a, a couple of things. So it needs to verify, uh, verify that, that, that the telemetry message is properly formatted tele telemetry message. And once that device is uh, registered and, and identified by the MQTT adapter, verify the, the, the uh, that that message uh, is actually uh, originated from the properly properly registered device, and we can see here uh, that we uh, this orange box is, is something that comes. It's implemented as a, as a part of the Eclipse Hono project, and uh, these other two services here are basically uh, services that Hono tries to to define only APIs about. So it, it's on purpose that we, that we don't try to force an implementation. We, we have a default implementation there, but, but the point is that you know, uh, a lot of solutions are already out there, people using their device registry, uh, registries and, and their identity managers. So the idea is that through, through a well-defined set of APIs that, that are designed for the IoT use case, you can basically plug and play any of those existing solutions uh, uh, into, the, into the whole Hono messaging, uh, messaging uh, picture. So let's start with the device registry. So device registry is a, is a typical IoT cloud component, which, you know, the, the, the name says it all. So it's a, it's a registry of, of all devices known to, 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 a certain, uh, to a certain IoT solution. And we define a couple of APIs uh, that are important uh, for, for any device registry uh, to, to implement. And this is what we think is, is a, like a min, minimal API needed for, for, for any device registry to be useful in, uh, in this kind of a concept, uh, concept. So the tenant API, we, we'll get into the more, more details, give us this multi-tenancy. So, so the idea is that we can reuse this whole infrastructure within multiple users. And, and multiple users can use the, the same infrastructure seeing only their part of the world. So, so it's, it's a you know, typical uh, typical thing uh, in any any cloud infrastructure. Uh, device re device registration is all about 
registering identities of the devices so that we can identify later on when we consume those telemetry messages and see, okay, yeah, this, is, this temperature reading is coming from the device in the right corner of the blue room of the, of the HIPCOM, HIPCOM space, so, so that we know, not know the exact device. And then every device needs to have a, at least one set of credentials in order to be able to, to connect, connect it to, to the cloud platform. So it can be a username, password, uh, certificate, or, or pre-share pre secret or something like that. So we'll see that, we'll see that in a moment. Uh, what these uh, dotted line, lines uh, uh, implies also is that each of these services are independently scalable. So, so that's another thing that Honor tries to do is to, like, it's easy to do this for a medium to small to medium application when, when you have like, a, you know, dozens or, or hundreds of devices. But if you try to create a, 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 a platform that potentially can scale to, to a millions of devices and, and have hundreds or thousands of tenants and things like that, then you need to have scalability on, on, on each of the levels. So the, the, the messaging layer we, we covered last year, and uh, we talk a little bit about, uh, about that today, but also all, all the services and components uh, defined by Hono are basically uh, independently, independently scalable. So everything is running on, on Kubernetes, so everything is kind of a service in Kubernetes, so you can, you can manually you know, uh, scale out the, the MQTT layer if, if needed or, or device register layer if needed, so uh, the system can scale out uh, depending on the, on, on the use case. So uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about this, uh, these APIs. So as I said, the, the first API of the device registry is, is, is the tenant API. And, and tenant API allows us to, to create, you can think about it as a, like an Amazon account or Azure account, so an account that will use 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 uh, use this application so it, it, it serves two purposes the, the first the purpose is to basically group devices connecting to the platform to, to a cer certain tenant so these all these devices uh, are belonging to a tenant so tenant can be a, 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 as I said like a cloud user or if it's deployed locally if, if it if, if it's deployed within a, a company, it can be like a developer group within the company or, or di different, different IoT applications developed by, by, by a single group of people. But the important thing is that devices are, are grouped by the tenant and also all the consumption of telemetry data is basically authorized based on the tenant. So we, we think about each device consumes its own data but the business application in general are not interested in the particular data from a single device. They want to get all the data for a single tenant, get it somewhere in, into kind of a, a processing engine or, or the database, and then, then uh, deal with those data, data later. So, as I said, uh, mandatory operations that, that are uh, specified by Hono are only those, those operations that, that are needed by the Hono microservices to check the consistency of the data in the in, in the system, we defined uh, the the so to, so to say CRUD API so, so that people can implement their own registry on our CRUD APIs so so that uh, people can add add data to the to, to the registry and, and things like that. But those are not not mandatory. So that that, that is everything that that uh, that can be developed or or reused uh, by by the current system registries. But if if you go with the with, with this API, we, we can see a little bit about the structure of the data that, that, uh, that are done by the registry. So, okay, you deployed your system, you, you have everything running, you, you have your uh, account running, so, so how do you start with, with Hono? Basically, first thing you want to do is to create tenant uh, using the, the tenant API, and, and by looking at this, you will see that we, we are like curling uh, to, to a, a tenant uh, URI and providing providing a, a, like a JSON structure uh, defining defining our, our tenant. The only mandatory here uh, mandatory thing here is is the tenant ID. That will be the the, the unique thing that our, that's our unique account ID. And we can also provide some additional meta metadata uh, 
uh, data here. One good example of, of this is like a, a list of the adapters that th this tenant can use. For example, you can, uh, depending on the use case, scope the, scope the devices of a particular tenant that they can only use MQTT or they can only use HTTP or they can use both. So that's all defined, uh, defined by, the, by the tenant API. Uh, Next thing, what we, what we want to do once we have tenant to provision devices uh, for, for these tenants. And that's done by the, the, by the device registration API. Uh, again, device registration a API is uh, later on used by the protocol adapter to, to, to check if the actually, actually messages uh, are originating from the, from the device we were, we were talking about. And uh, every message will contain like a, a JWT token uh, with the confirming that the, 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 the device was sent by the authenticated and author authorized device. So this information can be used by the components downstream in the system to, to verify the, the consistency, consistency of, the, of the message. Uh, in, in the similar manner, Hono provides an example, example API to, to do this. And one thing you, you will notice here that, you know, once we have a tenant, all our further APIs basically contains uh, uh, tenant uh, information inside of them. So uh, Hono comes uh, with a file-based device registry implemented by default. It's not meant to be... Uh, used for, uh, for a serious pr production deployments, but it's good enough to, to have demos and, and uh, examples ba based on them. So, uh, so this uh, API now defines, uh, defines uh, with, with a posting a, a command to, to the slash registration slash default tenant, and the de default tenant is, is something that, that comes pre-configured pre with, the, with the example deployment of the system. We can register a device, and in this case, uh, just saying device ID is uh, uh, 4711. For for, I don't I, I don't even know what, what's the reason for the 4711. Some, one of the developers choose that random number. So, again, like with the tenants, uh, you can provide all different kind of metadata here, depending on on, on the specific devices you want to use and, and and the specific device registry you have, but. Now we have like a one, one, one tenant provision in the system and that tenant has one device provision for him. The only thing, the last thing we, we need to do is uh, to provide a, a set of credentials so that this, this device uh, uh, can connect to us. And credentials, yeah, as, as, as you can imagine, credentials are, are used by the protocol adapters every time the device tries to connect there. It, it will it will hit uh, a device registry, try, try to, to verify that, to get us the device ID, and then uh, you know, the protocol adapter will, will basically sign, the, sign every message sent by this connection later on as identified by the, by the, by the uh, protocol adapter. So, example for the, for the, for the REST API uh, that can be used in, in this case, is, uh, is uh, uh, shown here. So uh, Honor tries to be uh, extensible as, as possible. So, so we don't Im imply things and, and, and try to, to keep things generalized in, in, this, in these terms. So basically uh, out of the box, Honor comes with, with a couple of uh, types of credentials that can be used. So hash password are, are, are one of the, the most common common things used in the in industry, uh, then uh, uh, pre hash passwords or, or, or certificates are, are some of the other options. And you can see here that with this command, we, we particularly set and uh, bounded uh, the, the, this set of credentials to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the device ID 4720. Which, which has a different out, out, uh, authentication ID. In this case, it, it was called sensor 20. Uh, what this means is that this uh, uh, deliberate, deliberate um, separation of the authentication ID and the device ID tells us that we, we can 
in theory, have a, a multiple credentials for, for a single device. And, and that the mapping between the author, authorization ID and this actual pair of credentials to the exact device ID will be done at the, at the uh, out, authentication level. So now back to the, the main pic picture. Uh, we kind of went through these utility services of, that HONO provides for the messaging. So we have a device registry that can be used to, to actually you know, provide all the frameworks that we need to plug in any, any uh, reasonable device registry into the system and, and use you know, device identities, credentials, and things like that on top of the, the general purpose messaging. Uh, now we can think about how, how the flow actually goes. And, and to use like a telemetry API uh, example, uh, I'll skip this because I don't have too much time. Let me just show you how, how the, the, the API looks like. Uh, I'm sorry for skipping some slides. I just before the presentation learned that this presentation is 35 minutes and not 50, which I assume. So <laughs> we have 15 minutes less, but anybody who's interesting, we can talk for 15 minutes at the booth. <laughs> so th this is an example of, of how you can post the telemetry data uh, to the to, to the hon to the Hono, and and this is uh, this is using, for example, HTTP adapter, meaning that assuming that that device will use the, the plain HTTP protocol to send to send data there. So we have a, a couple of interesting things to see here. So basically you can see that everybody sends, uh, sends uh, data to the single URI, single, single point, and it all identification is done, done by, the, uh, 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 by, the, by the identifying yourself properly to the system. So we have now here saying, I'm sensor one for the t default tenant, and this is my password. And this sensor one is basically our authorization ID, our, uh, authentication ID. Uh, I belong to default tenant, so, so that gives us all the information for the, for the tenant and device registry and credentials API to go there and actually, actually resolve this in, in, a, in a proper device ID that will be used, a logical device ID that will be use, used later on, later on in the system. Consuming of the messages is uh, even simpler because all, all of the consumers are basically uh, connecting to the, to the AMQP messaging infrastructure and that messaging infrastructure is, is uh, generally the same as any other messaging application you, you, would, you, you would connect there. So th this is one example from the, from the workshop we will be giving next week. And uh, this shows like, that you can even use uh, a framework like Apache Camel to, to consume uh, telemetry data from the, from the HONO without any problems. In this particular case, we are connecting to the AMQP, uh, AMQP telemetry slash default tenant, meaning that we want to get all the messages for, for our, our default tenant. And in this particular case, we want to send that to, to a particular Kafka topic for further, further processing. So beyond, uh, because time is running out, be beyond uh, telemetry command and control, as I said, is, is another uh, important topic w when you talk about IoT messaging. So, and there are always people coming and asking, how should you do that for a large number of devices? If we have like tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of devices, because as we said, reliability is, is, a, is a big concern there. So the, the first instinct is to like, let's have a queue per device or, or, or something like that. And that gets very complicated very quickly because a solutions like that are, are very hard, hard to scale. So what we choose to do instead of that is to, to use direct messages, messaging for, for, for sending commands back, back to the devices. Uh, we can talk about direct versus broker messaging later on, that, that was something that, that, uh, that, that is out of the scope of, of this talk. So, but it basically means that, that the HONO and when business application tries to send uh, a command to device, if the device is not available at the moment, uh, that command will, will fail immediately. So the, we, we need some kind of mechanism uh, to notify the, the cloud when, when the device uh, is available because there's a usual pattern in IoT is that a lot of devices are sleeping 
most of the time because they are battery powered or something like that, and then wake up from time to time, uh, do the work, and then go, go back to sleep. So we need to have to know about that window when devices are, are actually you know, operating in, in cert certain cases. So that's why uh, we implemented all, defined also a, a device notification API, which, which is a mechanism which device can use to, to send a notification to the cloud saying, okay, I'm here and I will be here for the next 10 minutes. Do you have any, anything for me? And this can be sent as a separate message uh, to the cloud or, or uh, b basically device can piggyback the telemetry message and just add a header saying like, this is my, you know, this, this is my telemetry data and by the way, I'll be here alive waiting for the commands for the next 10 minutes. If you think about like a connection oriented protocol like MQTT and, and more like beefy hardware, this is not a problem. It, it's easy to implement and you know, you, you expect that devices will be connected most of the time. But this is also necessary to implement uh, a, a smaller devices that maybe use a protocol like, like uh, 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 connectionless protocols like, like HTTP, where each request is, is uh, very short, to, to be able to, to give time to a protocol adapter to basically say, okay, yeah, I will wait for, for these commands for the next, next five minutes and then try to deliver them back to the device. So that's, that's where, where we will stop now. I'll, I, I hope I uh, managed to explain why just having an MQTT broker uh, is not enough uh, to, to create a, a really scalable and really, really useful uh, uh, messaging infrastructure for the IoT and explain some of the, some of the issues and, and some of the concepts that, that needs to be implemented for this. So uh, if you have any, any further questions, I'll be here all day today and tomorrow, and I, I'm always happy to talk about this topic. On the Hip Space booth right after the talk and during the day, whenever you see me, just stop me. Thanks.